Welcome to part two of this three-part video series on RNA-seq data analysis with Callisto and Sleuth. In this video, I'm going to talk about the problem of aligning reads in an RNA-seq experiment using a splice-aware or gapped alignment, how Callisto takes a different approach called pseudo-alignment and what that means, and then I'll talk briefly about how you actually run Callisto at the command line. First, we have to deal with the problem of exact alignment of RNA-seq reads to the genome. Mapping RNA-seq reads against a reference needs to account for introns because the reads come from mature mRNAs which do not have introns. Those have been spliced out, but of course you're mapping against a genome which does contain introns. Introns can range from 50 to 100,000 bases, therefore leaving large gaps in the alignment. Alignment programs like Top Hat must account for this, and I'm showing a schematic here from the Top Hat paper that shows how they attempt to deal with this problem. Initially, they map the reads to the whole genome with an aligner like Bowtie, and then they collect the unmappable reads, those that map across introns, into a separate group. Then they try to assemble a consensus of the covered regions and estimate possible splicings, splicing sites between neighboring exons. And then they try to map those unmappable reads across those splicing sites. There's another problem that you can get with RNA-seq reads, and that is that they can map into an intron incorrectly. I'm showing here that the read in red has a correct mapping on the bottom, where it spans exon 1 and exon 2, but it can also incorrectly map through the end of in exon 1 into intron 1 because of a sequence match at the very end of the read. Aligners need to account for this as well. An additional problem is the presence of pseudogenes in the human genome. This is when a pseudogene is a collection of the exons with the introns removed. Thus, it looks very much like a mature mRNA, and so reads that originated from the RNAs that map over intron-exon boundaries will also map very well to pseudogenes, and aligners need to account for this problem additionally. Thus, with all of this complexity, mapping RNA-seq reads to the genome can be very computationally expensive. With current state-of-the-art methods, if you want to align 20 samples with each with 30 million reads, you're looking at a gapped alignment time of about 23 CPU hours. Additionally, quantification of expression levels takes an additional 10 hours. Callisto aims to improve on this by being much, much faster. In fact, they claim that you can process up to 10 million reads per minute on a standard laptop computer. As you can see from the figure, it is orders of magnitude faster than Bowtie 2 or Top Hat 2. Callisto is also accurate. In this figure, they're showing results where Callisto is more accurate than Top Hat 2 and Cufflinks, Sailfish or Bowtie 2 and Express, and slightly less accurate than Bowtie 2 plus RSM. Now all of this speed allows Callisto to engage in a process called bootstrapping. This is where the data is resampled and subsampled many, many times to get an estimate of the technical variance. And what this figure is showing is that the Callisto bootstrapped variance correlates very, very well with the actual technical variance in the experiment, and so it allows you to estimate very accurately what the technical variance was, so that can be subtracted out so you can understand what the biological variance was. So what is pseudo-alignment and how is it different from the gapped or splice-aware alignment I just described? Well, pseudo-alignment proceeds by evaluating k-mers of a read. K-mers are short segments that go down the read. So I'm showing a sequence here in red and then the seven mers of that sequence. And the key insight to pseudo-alignment is that you don't care where exactly a read aligns along a transcript, just which set of transcripts it may be compatible with for statistical purposes. The process proceeds as follows in this diagram. If you look on the right, you have a read in black that spans an intron. Then you have a set of transcripts in pink, blue, and green. First, when you build an index in Callisto, you're constructing what's called a debris graph of the transcriptome from the transcripts. You can think of this as kind of like a path through the transcriptome. In part C, you can see that the read has been turned into its constitutive k-mers, and those k-mers have been mapped to the debris graph. You can see that the first three k-mers match across pink, blue, and green transcripts, but the fourth k-mer 
only matches to pink and blue and not to green, so it takes the upper path along the debris graph. Now, additionally, you can speed up this process by skipping camers where the compatibility with the debris graph does not change. So you can see with the dashed arrows, you can actually skip from the first camer to the fourth camer to the fifth camer. And then you can take the intersection of those compatibilities to understand where the read could have originated from in terms of which transcripts it belongs to. Doing this speeds up the alignment process dramatically because for the vast majority of reads, you only need to actually align the first and last k-mers. This graph is showing the fraction of reads on the y-axis and on the x-axis the number of k-mers that have to be hashed to align that read. You can see that the vast majority, over 60%, have only two k-mers hashed, whereas only 1.6% of reads require the hashing of every k-mer. This represents a dramatic speed up and is part of the reason why Callisto is so fast. Other things that make Callisto fast include the fact that it only looks for exact matches of camers during the pseudo alignment process. This exact matching is much easier alg algorithmically than allowing for mismatches. Additionally, sequencing errors produce camers in the reads that are just not found in the transcriptome debris graph and thus they can be discarded, assuming a low error rate. So how do you use Callisto? Well, there are two main steps. Step one is to build an index, and step two is to quantify your reads against that index. Building the index proceeds as follows. Assuming you've already installed Callisto on your machine, you would invoke it with the command Callisto index, and then dash i, where you give it the name of the index file to create, and then a transcripts.fasta file which contains cDNAs from your target organism. Doing this will take about 10 minutes to run and then you'll have an index against which you can quantify your reads. Quantifying the reads is also simple. You invoke Callisto by saying at the command line Callisto quant dash i you give it the name of the index dash o the name of your output file and then you give it your two paired end fastq files. There are a number of other options. You can specify the number of bootstraps with a dash B, the number of threads for bootstrapping with a dash T. This step takes about 10 to 15 minutes for a paired end run with 30 million reads in a single sample. The output of Callisto after it has aligned and quantified the reads consists of three files, an abundance.txt, abundance.h5, and a run info JSON file. Abundance.txt and h5 contain the same information, but the h5 is a large scale storage format called HDF5, which we don't need to worry about for the purposes of this tutorial. The abundance.txt is the information that Sleuth will use to evaluate differential expression. You can see it contains the target ID, that that's the transcript ID, the length, the effective length, estimated counts, and then transcripts per million in a tab-separated format. If you want to learn more about Callisto, here are some resources from the Pactor group. There's also a link there for Sleuth, for RNA-seq. There's a blog post on Callisto and how a little more information on how it works. And then the third link is the GitHub Callisto information page. So thanks for watching, and in video three, I'm going to describe how to use Sleuth for exploratory data analysis of your RNA-seq that has been processed with Callisto.